So Libretto is our telemetry, dashboarding, real-time charting, and um, information sharing environment for DevOps and engineering teams to understand you know, the metrics that are key to them while supporting their infrastructure or their application environment. And so Libretto, like Pingdom, is a SaaS-based service that collects data from a number of integrations and then lets you visualize, analyze, set alerts, thresholds, and um, dashboards and build rich real-time dashboards that give uh, you uh, uh, both for the, the kind of the big screen purpose where you're, you've got the operations um, center and you want to see the big screen with the, with the dashboards, also for debugging and analyzing specific performance problems. And so it provides a consistent base for your team to, uh, to collaborate on, on understanding and solving and monitoring and diagnosing problems in, in production and development environments. So what you're looking at here is a dashboard we set up for this demo that takes data from uh, Le Le uh, Paper Trail and Pingdom. And so here we've got the uptime checks for, uh, for a test host coming in. And as you can see, you can see the different uh, locations along this. Um, I'm grouping by the different locations here that we're checking from. And then this is the average uh, across all those locations over time. And um, if I scroll out to uh, six hours, it's a lot smoother, of course. And so Libretto wouldn't be a product if it wasn't for its integrations, right? And so let's jump into where the data comes from. And so there's a range of supported platforms as well as an API that lets you get data into Libretto. So we have our own agent. Libretto has a CollectD-based host agent, which you install on your, on your host that comes with uh, CollectD plugins for things like Docker, Redis, Nginx, uh, other, other servers and platforms. And then there's also... Um, AWS integration, you can give us our keys and we'll start to grab CloudWatch data from uh, any of the services that you're interested in. And then there's also integrations with a range of uh, web frameworks and servers. So if you're running a DropWizard app, you can get great uh, statistics with our DropWizard plugin that just gives you percentiles and application latency, error counts, you know, throughput. Same with Rails, if you, if you want to use the Libretto Rails plugin, you can get control and action breakdowns on performance and counters and all kinds of things like select, insert, update, delete queries, and, and real deep uh, introspection of your, of your Rails uh, framework. And, and, and similarly, with a lot of other uh, platforms and environments, you can get a lot of data into Libretto, and of course, the charting and graphing is great, but you also want to be able to get data out of Libretto. And so we also support a range of um, outbound integrations, whether you're doing an ops, uh, chat ops based environment where you want to send ch charts, interesting charts to Slack or have alerts go to Slack, or if you want to just have an arbitrary webhook to a program you wrote that helps capture some action, or if you're using PageDuty and you need someone to wake up in the middle of the night for an alert, uh, these are all supported use cases as well. So I'm going to take us to an EC2 dashboard that we are using to you know, monitor the performance of some instances in the cloud. And this is kind of similar to what you saw before. And here I wanted to show off the filtering features. So um, in EC2, you know, customers often use tags and need to uh, slice and dice the data on, on a range of uh, filters. So if we want to say, OK, let's just look at C32XL instances and um, and maybe we also want to um, add a filter on show me uh, instances just in the US East 1 zone that um, are in. Now let's go even down to the, uh, the range, or, or perhaps we want to group by on the, on the, on the, the zone. And so you, you, there's a range of kind of real-time interactive slicing and dicing features where you can very quickly build a page that has filters on uh, multi-dimensional tags. And so all these metrics aren't stored in just single series uh, format, but they're all using a multi-dimensional tag storage um, uh, model, which allows you to iteratively add and remove filters as you're trying to diagnose or debug a problem. And then these filters are also, these tags are also useful for setting alerts or understanding or building custom dashboards where certain of the tags are pinned. Let's say I, I know I have a, I know I have an internal environment called dog food, and I just want to get all the instances that end with the word dog food into this chart, and then, um, and that's that's very easy to do. So the slicing and dicing, and the, uh, the sort of the interactive building up of a chart, and now I can sort of save this chart or this dashboard, and then and link it to my team so that we're all um, on the same page in the in the type of exploration we're doing. Does this <coughs> data feed back into the Solar Winds data too, or is it totally separate? As a 
<coughs> a separate collection of the data. Um, Are you talking about Orion? Yeah. Ah, um, that's a good question. Uh, at present, <laughs> that is not the case. At present, that's not the case. Um, today, this, these are all SaaS-based monitoring suites, uh, tools, and, and, um, and the integration with, with, uh, with the core IT products like, uh, like Orion or, or is, is not there yet. Yeah, that's definitely something we're, we're, we're thinking about. Cool. Um, so the slicing and dicing is, is that that's one of the power features of Librato is the ability to to go in and use the, the tags and the, and, and, um, and the dashboarding environment. I want to show you a dashboard that is uh, more of a, you know, one of those big, big board kiosk type dashboards showing off a few more of the charting types. And so here you can uh, have the big number chart with a threshold to make it go yellow or orange or red for warning or, or uh, critical situations. And then this is sort of a high level dashboard where you're composing some lines and some charts together. It's real easy to uh, you know redesign your your dashboards as you see fit and drag stuff around and and make changes and then share them with your team. But um, and you can also have dashboards that link to charts that link to other dashboards. So maybe you have a ELB chart and you say, okay, I, I think I'd like my uh, my team to be able to understand this problem more deeply, so they can just click on um, on a chart and then go to a you know a, a chart more focused on the specific problem that was. Uh, linked to from the, the overview chart. So in this way, your team can build these uh, layers of detail in so that at the summary level, you're, you're understanding a problem and then you're diving deep if you see something that you're concerned about. In this case, why did the request rate drop so quickly, for example? Um, and so this is all great, the slicing and dicing, but certainly uh, you can't expect your team to be staring at numbers all day long with their eyeballs and diagnosing problems. And so that's why we, uh, there's also this alerting feature and this is a um, core part of Librato, where you can build alerts that combine combinations of conditions that, um, that on a range of condition types, such as here, if the, if the condition here, we're going to make an alert for RDS. And let's say uh, we're very concerned about CPU utilization on our RDS instances in the US East 1 region. And then we also, we want to preview that chart alive. And so we know that there's a condition here where CPU usage just seems to be spiking above 60%, um, but not for very long. So I'm not too worried about it if it takes less than, uh, goes for less than 10 minutes. But then, you know, maybe I, I would like to get an alert if it, it persists for longer than that. And I can continue to move forward and say, okay, but that's not enough. I, I don't want anyone to wake up unless there's another condition met, perhaps you know, something having to do with the replica lag, or if I want to also add more um, additional conditions so that I'm iteratively building up a check that's very specific to a problem I'm trying to solve or, or I want to stay on top of. And so you can continue to kind of build up uh, more checks and more conditions into your checks so that you're not just um, creating a lot of noise, uh, which is always a common problem with operations. And of course, like I mentioned, there's all these um, integration partners that let you send these alerts to PageDuty or Slack or what have you. Great. Um, going back to our dashboard. Here's a quick question. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> you guys are doing alerting from you know, there, just like you showed, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And you've always been able to do alerting in your product suite, mm -hmm. right, which is great. Is there any unification to that, you know, as opposed to going into every single different isolated product and creating alerts that are going to trigger and send, you know, is there a way to say, you know, across all my platforms, if certain conditions that are generic enough to do this with, right, are met, mm -hmm. trigger? Right. Yeah, I'd argue um, across the, the, the SaaS offerings today, Librato is the best place to do that um, because all of our... Um, all of our products integrate with Librato and send data to Librato. So if you were to build a multi-product check that took Pingdom data and also added a condition for paper trail data and trace view data, that would be something you'd, you'd want to do in Librato's um, okay. alerting system. And yeah, we're sort of thinking as Librato is the common telemetry um, place for all of our SaaS-based cloud monitoring tools. Cool. Uh, going back to the demo account, so I, I first jumped into a space that was showing 
uh, data from Paper Trail. And so this is another, this is towards your question. We're also getting data on this chart from, from Paper Trail, which I'm going to jump into next. And this is our uh, cloud log aggregation and uh, management tool. Uh, so I'm, here is the, um, the dashboard where you see there's this malicious login attempts chart, which is charting the number of times that a uh, malicious login appeared in a paper trail log. And I can take you right to the, um, the dashboard and the log files generating this, this chart. And so here we go. You can see Lee's trying to hack this server. And that's, that's a real problem. He's over there and uh, trying to break in. Luckily, he hasn't yet figured out the password. But, um, you know, and so if I want to chart, as you can see has been done, or if I want to share with my team, I'm concerned about these malicious logins, I can build up a search. And here you can see the search string just targeted on this, this line. And these are, you can either write very complicated regular expressions or just have <coughs> And then you can export this chart. As you can see here, this is being sent to Librato for... Um, for matches, and uh, and then you can build up <coughs> alerts based on um, based on any types of uh, matching strings. And so maybe I am concerned with something that happened a few days ago. You know, it's great that this is uh, this is the live log tailing experience from right now. But if I want to jump back to Yesterday at 2 p.m., I can I can scroll back in the logs whether I'm searching or not and understand. Okay, here's where. Um, here's where I, uh, this, this incident that I'm trying to audit occurred. Uh, and then I can disable the filter and get more context on what's going on in the log file around that time. So Paper Trail ingests data from a variety of sources, but they're all unified using the, uh, the syslog format. So if you know syslog and you're running systems like rsyslog or syslogng or syslog and you're uh, and you're able to do so, you can just start forwarding us your data. Uh, I know Docker has native syslog uh, support as well. Uh, if you don't already have a syslog server, we have a syslog agent for you that will tail log files and send them back to you, back to us. That's a low resource utilization um, logging capture agent. And for Windows, we also have uh, um, an agent that you can run on your systems to send us data as well. So it's, um, it's easy to get started. We support a wide range of of um, platforms and uh, log collection points. The uh, the key thing about Paper Trail is that you know log files are noisy. There's a lot of data in there, and so if you want to segment your systems into multiple groups, we can you can uh, set up multiple endpoints and then segment your log data, whether by using searches or whether by setting up separate systems in in, in Paper Trail. And so here's um, here's a search or no here's a here's a log. Uh, aggregation group based just on this particular uh, set of servers that are sending data here. And uh, making a new group is as easy as um, creating a group here and then, um, and then choosing certain hosts to be part of that group or configuring the endpoints that when they spin up dynamically, for example, to send to the dedicated syslog server for that group. Great. Uh, so that's 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 pretty much paper trail. Uh, the key aspects here are that there's a lot of tribal knowledge in log files, and there's a lot of magical patterns or regular expression matches that your team might know about. But getting them all out into the open and save somewhere so that when a certain problem or incident needs to be diagnosed, uh, a safe search is goes a long way towards helping your team understand um, log files better and then working together. So let's say I have a problem where. Let's say I want to solve a problem where I'm trying to audit performance logs in web requests, and I want to know about all the posts going on. I can make a search, and then I can save this search. And now here is the integration point where I can say, OK, here's all my post requests. And now I'm turning this into alert that integrates with any number of our supported output integrations. And so here you can see you can send data to Librato or PagerDuty or SNS notifications, or to an arbitrary webhook or email. And this is the way that we were showing the data on malicious login attempts in the, in the paper trail, in the Librato dashboard uh, for, the, for uh, one of those other safe searches. Uh, 